Joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Angela Ginn Meadows, Senior Diabetes Educator, Education Coordinator at the University of Maryland Center for Diabetes and Endocrinology at the UMMC Midtown Campus. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, thank you. Everybody's heard of diabetes. What is pre-diabetes? Well, you know, every 19 seconds, someone's diagnosed with diabetes. Wow. However, there are millions of people that have prediabetes. It's like one step in the door of having diabetes, but you can prevent it. And more of us need to prevent it because we, it, um, diabetes is really a disease that causes a lot of complications. How is, how is prediabetes defined? It is defined by having A1C, um, and that is a blood sugar um, average over the past two to three months, and it's um, 5.7 to 6.4. So your doctor can do that, or can even test for oral glucose tolerance tests, or do a fasting value. Does the patient know anything's wrong at that point? No, and you know, most people don't know that they're walking around with prediabetes. So getting screened every year is important, especially if you're at risk. Are most physicians screening that aggressively? It, is it in, in most doctor's offices either your glucose is okay or not okay? So that's where I want my patients to be advocates. So if you are 40 or older, or if you have a parent or sibling with diabetes, um, if you're overweight or if you're of color or had a baby that was nine pounds, you wanna get screened every year. Wow. Um, and it really creeps up. You have five years to get it together when you have prediabetes. That's kind of the window of time frame. And if you do nothing about it or just say, ah, oh, I'm on the borderline, <laughs> I'll get to it eventually. You will then be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And as for what one can do about it, that brings us to the world's yes. smallest shopping cart <laughs> that you brought so, with you. <laughs> I always say you shop healthy first. So if you bring it home healthy, you'll most likely eat it. If I had a shopping cart this size, I, <laughs> I would work. lose a lot of weight. <laughs> you would. Yeah. But at least 60% of your cart should be fruits and vegetables. In any forms, it could be fresh, canned, or frozen. The next part about it is what you put on your plate. So um, we both have a pen, and I want you to be able to section off your plate. Okay. Um, I'll do, play. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to think about Thanksgiving. Where would you put your mashed potatoes? Where would you put your turkey? And where would you put some vegetables? Uh, roughly, honestly, half yes. and half turkey and mashed potatoes, so, and maybe a little, <laughs> little section over here for the vegetables. Okay. So really, half of your I plate flunked, I think. should be your veggies. So half your plate should be your vegetables, and then whatever starch you choose, it should go over in the corner, and whatever meat you choose should go right here. And that's a healthier plate. Are, are you bringing the markers and the plates to your Thanksgiving dinner? Well, you know, do, I do people want to hear this? I naturally eat like this. I'm at risk for diabetes. My dad had diabetes, uh, my aunt, and both my grandmothers. So, and I'm African American, and African Americans are twice likely more um, at risk of having diabetes. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about diabetes or pre-diabetes, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen or tweet your question. Our Twitter address is at MPT News. So how should people who have a risk factor, whether it's African-American or another, think about it? I mean, should you think it's my destiny, I'm not going to fight it, or how would you look at it? So diabetes does not have to be your destiny. You have to first get active. So it's recommended 150 minutes a week of exercise. That's roughly about 30 minutes, five days a week, or 20 minutes almost every day. The other thing is you have to lose some weight. So maintaining and losing weight is really key. It doesn't have to be 50, 60, 70 pounds. It's just about 10% um, of your body weight. And the importance of doing that heading off diabetes to the past in terms of the rest of your life is huge. It is. The first thing, get screened. So um, prediabetes, you can actually suffer from complications during that time of just having prediabetes, such as heart disease and also neuropathy. And if we can prevent it, you know, we can make sure you have um, a life full of quality. Tell me about the, the uh, diabetes 
prevention programs that you run? Yeah, so we have, um, it's called DPP, and Diabetes Prevention Program was developed by the CDC. And they actually created a program that we know that we can lower your risk of diabetes and cut, shave off the years of time. We have a great program at university, and it's free. And so we're looking for more people to sign up. It's a 16-week program, so it is a commitment. You gotta be there uh, once a week, 16 Once a week weeks. for 16 weeks. Weeks, and then we have a post score program. But it's about learning your lifestyle. Lifestyle is the key here of preventing diabetes. Who should sign up for that? If you're at risk or if you have prediabetes, you want to make sure you sign up. And tell a friend. Guess what? Some people are walking around. They said their doctor told them something about prediabetes. They didn't know anything or do anything about it. But this is time to take some time for yourself. How do you measure success in, in this program? You measure success by 7% weight loss of, um, from the start to finish, and then you also measure success with getting active. And if you meet that 150 minutes of activity a week, you can do it. Our participants got up to 300 minutes a week, the highest up to 400 minutes a week. Let's grab a phone call. Uh, Calvert County, this is Courtney. Courtney, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi, I was wondering if it was possible to beat diabetes without going on medication. Possible to beat it? Yes, uh, if you can control your diabetes without needing medication. Once somebody's already diagnosed? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Courtney, you are absolutely right. The first line of defense for um, type 2 diabetes is diet and exercise. Then we move to pills, injectables, and then insulin. But you can really control your diabetes with diet and exercise. What, what's most important in terms of if you had to pick one, I mean, if somebody uh, is, is clearly at risk and you have their attention and an opportunity to either work on lifestyle or diet, where do you start? Lifestyle is the combination of exercise and nutrition. You can't do one out the other. So it's just like a ladder. There's no way it can stand on its own if you're just doing one. So it's really about the combination that works. Talk about the education component of this. Uh, outside the medical community, inside the medical community, what do you want people to know? I think people need to know how to eat. We talked about shopping. <laughs> we talked about what to put on your plate. Um, we also talked about meals and dining out. The classes really give you a wide variety of things to help you with challenges that you may come about, reading labels, understanding what you're putting in your body that really can be um, harmful for you over time. Very good. Angela Gilmeto is a Senior Diabetes Education Coordinator at the University of Maryland Center for Diabetes and Endocrinology. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.